Call of Duty Mobile just set a new record for the most first week downloads the world has ever seen. Furthermore, Activision is doing a great job with releasing new game modes each week, so if they keep this up, it could end up becoming one of the biggest games in the world. I've already given you guys a lot of tips for this game, but none of those were quite as advanced as these are. If you end up getting 25 kills without dying, you will unlock the ability to launch a nuclear bomb that after 10 seconds will destroy all five of your enemies, no matter where they are on the map. Obviously, this is difficult to do and requires some really incompetent teammates, but it does guarantee getting a pentakill, which is arguably even harder than killing 25 people without dying. Selecting a bazooka or guided missile as your secondary weapon allows you to shoot down UAVs, counter UAVs, stealth choppers, and even hover jets. That is, of course, if you kill them before they kill you. In addition to this, killing them gives a lot of points, which is really nice when you're trying to rack up a score streak. In my first video for this game, I said that I did not like the airdrop. I'm taking that back. For some reason, the airdrop only gave me UAVs and hunter drones, but now that I'm a higher level, I'm finding that using airdrops is the best way to get hover jets since they normally cost 1,600 points. Getting a hover jet isn't quite as amazing as a nuclear bomb, but it's pretty close and it is a lot more fun. Just make sure to keep changing its position in the sky by using this button or else you will probably get shot down pretty quickly. In my last video for this game, I gave you guys my opinion for the best two finger configuration for the game. But I forgot to mention that after you get really comfortable using that configuration, I recommend decreasing the opacity on all your buttons to around 30% to increase your peripheral vision. If you have not seen my main tips and tricks video for this game, I strongly recommend that you do so. I put a lot of work into that video and I promise you will not be disappointed. However, in that video, I did make one mistake by implying that the full metal jacket attachment increases the damage of your gun. I apologize for that slip up, the FMJ does not increase your damage, but rather reduces the decrease in damage that you experience when shooting someone through a wall. So if you have a weapon that is almost killing people with one or two shots, the full metal jacket is not a good choice because it will not make the difference you are wanting. However, if you have a weapon that does the damage you like and want to do more damage while shooting through walls, then it is the perfect attachment. Likewise, the foregrip does not actually increase the accuracy of your gun in the traditional sense, but rather reduces the recoil of your gun, which indirectly affects your accuracy. And in a similar vein, the stock does not actually increase the base mobility of your gun, but rather significantly increases your mobility while you are actively aiming it. All of the other attachments are pretty self-explanatory. I do still plan on making a playlist on the best attachments for each weapon, but that will require a lot of research, so I will explain my plans for that at the end of this video. Getting to level 150 takes a lot of grinding. So if you want to speed up this process, I recommend playing a lot of unranked Dominion the next time that Activision releases a weekend double experience event. In these games, it is very easy to predict where your opponents will be coming from because they will be wanting to capture zones. This is of course smart for them because they want to win the game, but your main objective in this game is to get experience. So while you do want to win for the extra 400 something points, this is your chance to rack up a crazy amount of kills while your enemy is busy trying to win the game. Each of those kills will give you 40 experience, or 80 if you are doing it during the double XP event, and if you are good enough, focusing so much on kills instead of capturing zones will likely prolong the length of the game. This will allow you to get even more kills and longer games give more experience faster than starting a new game, making playing domination this way the fastest way to level up. There are a lot of rumors saying that you are fighting mostly bots before level 10, and not fighting any bots after level 10. This is not true. Activision and Tencent have not admitted to bots, but it's pretty obvious that they are in the game, so we as players are left to try to figure out when and where these bots are, which can sometimes be difficult because some of the players downloading this game are really bad and kind of play like bots. Some famous gamers started the rumor that after level 10 there are no bots, but that is not true. It might be partially true, but it is clearly more complicated. 
complicated than that. In unranked games, I also experienced that most of my early games were full of bots. Then at around level 5, I noticed that the game started pairing me with 4 bot teammates against another lower level player who also had 4 bot teammates. Then after level 10, I started seeing a lot less bots, but I noticed that even up to level 25, if I chose a specific game type on a specific map which caused the loading time to get above 40 seconds, then I would yet again get paired with one other person and each of us would have four bots as our teammates. Furthermore, no matter what level you are, when you first start playing ranked games, there is a good chance that you will find a lot of bots at the early bronze levels. But once you enter the veteran ranks, you will see almost no bots whatsoever. This is also true in the bronze rank of the battle royale game mode, and I think there are still quite a few bots even in the veteran rank of battle royale. I can't confirm that completely, but that has been my experience. And like I said earlier, since Activision and Tencent have been silent on whether or not there even are bots in this game, we as players are left to our experiences to try to figure out what their formula is for bots in the game. Once you get to the elite and pro ranks, you will notice that there are a lot of players using emulators. Call of Duty Mobile has not banned the use of emulators, and an emulator user with good settings has a distinct advantage over a two-fingered mobile user. I'm not sure what Activision is planning to do about this, but it seems as of now, if you are wanting to reach the top of the rankings, probably want to consider using an emulator. But then again, Activision could likely ban emulators in the future, so maybe it would be better to try to get good at using a claw configuration. You also might want to get good at using the left shooting button to hip fire. I personally prefer using the pre-firing technique that I showed you in my last video, but I've noticed that most of the pros primarily use hip firing. While we're talking about playing at a pro level, if you are serious about trying to get that good, I recommend taking a couple days and just playing the same game mode on the same map at least five times in a row. By playing at least the same map, but preferably the same game mode over and over again, you will notice that you start trying new things, which can help you realize what not to do in the future. Or you will find yourself perfecting a tactic that has been working for you. These types of discoveries are crucial for getting really good at a game, and they do not come as quickly if you are always playing random. If you want to play at this level, I will also be releasing a playlist with the best tactics for each map, but I will talk more about that at the end of this video. When you first start playing, it will feel like it is so easy to level up your weapons. That is because you have common weapons, which are really easy to level up. Rare and epic weapons require a lot more experience to level up, so I recommend saving as many experience cards as you can so that you can use them when you get a rare weapon you really like. Rare and epic weapons also give you passive abilities, which aren't usually a game changer, but they're still really nice. When playing Search and Destroy, the current meta is to throw down a smoke bomb and then a sticky bomb as your teammate goes to plant or defuse the bomb. This usually buys your teammate a few extra seconds, which can be a game changer. However, most random people you play with will not work together as a team, so I recommend joining the Call of Duty mobile Discord server because they have some great places to find good teammates. I have put a link to that Discord server in the pinned post of this video. In almost every game type, movement is life. Partially this is because you are harder to hit, but mostly it helps because as long as you are moving, your reflexes are partially engaged, which is why you will notice that you react faster to unexpected circumstances while you are moving than when you are standing still. In battle royale mode, always pick up all the ammo you find. Ammo does not take up any room in your backpack and you can carry up to 999 of each ammo type. By picking up all that extra ammo, you will have the ability to switch to a different weapon later in the game or give ammo to your allies who have need of it. Your character will not automatically pick up ammo that is not being used by the gun you are carrying, so it is important that you manually click every piece of ammo that you run across. This will also prevent your enemies from getting that ammo. As soon as you get your first adrenaline shot, go ahead and use it even if you have not lost any health because it will give you 150 hit points. No other healing item can restore your health past 100, so adrenaline shots are incredibly important. In fact, I recommend going to your settings, clicking here for battle royale settings, and then clicking here for the loot settings, and then increasing adrenaline to automatically pick up the max of 15, and then reducing the other two to five. It is unlikely that you will get 15 adrenaline shots because you should be using them every time you get injured to restore your health back up to 150, but 
you also don't want your enemies to get them, so you want to pick up every single one you can find. Helicopters are a lot of fun, but they are also easily shot down. If you are playing with a squad, make sure to have one of your teammates pick up a guided missile so that your team can shoot down other teams that linger too long in a vehicle. In solo mode, however, it is much easier to get away with using helicopters because it is less beneficial for solo players to carry around a guided missile launcher. In fact, if I get a really good sniper rifle, one of my favorite things to do is land a helicopter on this tower because it is an incredible sniping position with really good visibility and cover, and I can easily jump back into my helicopter when the zone closes in on me. When playing as the Defender class, it is important to note that your shield releases a flashbang when you place it, blinding all of your enemies in front of it for three seconds, which is a really long time. Make sure to take advantage of this time as they run around completely blind. Some players find it advantageous to move a button that you don't use to the very center of your screen and then reduce it to its smallest size to serve as a more obvious crosshair. Increasing your brightness even beyond what is needed can often give players an advantage. And lastly, if you're getting shot unexpectedly, sliding immediately almost always helps. Sliding makes you move faster than even running and reduces your hitbox to almost nothing. It may only be for a split moment, but sometimes that is all you need to figure out where your enemy is or get behind cover. Well, that's it guys. Hope that helps. I really love this game and want to make a ton of videos for it. But historically, I have struggled to get into new games because my subscribers are so heavily focused on the first game that I became known for. So if you like my style of making videos and want me to make more videos for this game, would you consider sharing this video with your friends that are already playing Call of Duty Mobile and share my other videos with your friends that don't play it yet but might be interested in getting into it. If I can get these two videos to do well, then I can make a ton of videos for this game. Also, liking and subscribing makes a big difference as well. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.